welcome one more day to an harmonia and a space to know ourselves deeper, to remember our true purpose of life and grow in the authentic reality, the so-called tree of lives. And today I'm going to speak further about the question of twin souls. Some people were asking about this profound issue. And even though I already gave some clues in the past, today I'm going to expand the question. I'm going to address the issue from different perspectives because the twin soul is a very wide conception. There can be different types of twin souls, different degrees, because twin means identical or similar, but similar in what? There can be many similarities in humanity, in different types of souls. So to begin with, we can start comparing it with the biological twins. If you notice, in biology, twins are those babies that grow within the same placenta, within the same uterus. When they are born in different placenta, in different bag, they are considered to be twins, but not identical twins. They can be fraternal twins. Sometimes the babies are born within the same placenta and they are completely identical. They can be girl-girl or boy-boy. And the way this happens is usually explained with the letters X and Y because they are representing the female and male polarities of the chromosomes. When a sperm fecundates an ovum, there is always a predominance of the male or female polarity because the male chromosomes are XY, female, male. Whereas the female chromosomes in the ovum are always XX, completely female. So if the male polarity predominates, obviously we are going to get a boy. And if the female polarity predominates in the fecundation of the sperm into the ovum, then we get a girl. Now the question is, if this happens on a biological sense, why not on a soul level? But we have to define what the placenta and the uterus is. In ancient times, it was known that souls are being gestated on the earth. The earth is considered to be a woman with a uterus. Even the universe as a whole was regarded as a uterus. And we can conceive the earth as a sort of placenta, a bag, or a set of bags, depending on the soul group in which we are growing. But in a general sense, we can think of the earth as a placenta, a bag of experiences where souls are growing. So in that sense, all those who are growing in conscience who are purifying the soul to become expressions of the tree of life, in a sense, are twin souls. Because all go through deceptions, suffering, self-growth, realizations, inner discovery, divine love, divine life. So, in this sense, we all can learn from each other because all are experiencing a set of experiences that can only be generated on this placenta, not in other planets. Here we are experiencing unique conditions and we are mixed up with people who look human, but they don't have a soul from the tree of life. They have a soul from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they have impulses that don't belong to 
divine life. This is why they have a tendency to destroy others. This is why they become organic portals for evil spirits and different kinds of influences that only want to destroy, especially destroy the beings of light. And we can also learn from that. So we can also learn from souls that don't belong to our own soul experience in a general sense. They are not twin souls. They are souls from other souls and they were put here with us to generate a certain friction. This is why the chaff is mixed up with the wheat. And later on you will understand why these kind of mixes are possible on this earth. They are not natural, but they take place. And this is why there is so much confusion. Let's say there is always a limited number of souls with which we can be completely complementary or partially complementary. There can be complementarity on physical, biological, emotional, mental and spiritual level. And we cannot be spiritually or mentally and emotionally complementary with souls that come from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In any case, there can be biological unions, sexual unions of some sort, but the results are a disaster. This is why there is wheat and chaff in the families. People get together and they don't understand they come from different sources because they don't know each other and they don't know themselves. This is the tragedy of how beings that in principle have light within themselves unite with people that are full of darkness. So it's very important to understand the issue of twin souls, complementarity of souls. As I said, in a general sense we all are twin souls, but souls are also part of different families. So the degree of twin soulship is going to be greater within the same soul family. And within the same soul family, there are also different kinds of complementarity, affinities. Now, before going into that, I would say there is a very important notion of twin soulship, which is the divine twin. And I will expand this in the following video, but we can start considering that when the Master came 2000 years ago, he began to demonstrate the possibility of living as a human, expressing a divine soul, a divine spirit, and therefore he gave birth to a new human blueprint. And all those who match that blueprint are like twins on a physical, emotional, mental and spiritual level. On a soul level, we are working on the emotions. So let's say that in order to grow and become fully divine, we must cross not only the physical level, but the soul level, and finally the spirit level. As the Master says in the conventional translation of the New Testament, if you are not born from the water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And by God, he was referring to the primordial father of lights, the source, which has an sphere of realization, which is known as the kingdom, where we can carry the crown of life, being the beings that we are meant to be, doing the works we are meant to do. So we can experience the divine kingdom on earth when we grow within ourselves and vibrate in accord with the universal blueprint demonstrated by the master. And this blueprint leads to salvation. This is why he was called salvation. And you shall call him 
Isho, because he will save his people. It was translated as Jesus in Greek, which comes from Aramaic Isho. In Hebrew, many pronounce the word as Yeshua. Yeshua means salvation as well in Hebrew, even though the letters are Yud, Shin, Bab, Ein. And if you study the pronunciation of those letters, you'll get Isho. The Syriac Aramaic pronunciation, which is also a code, because salvation doesn't come from a belief on someone that existed 2,000 years ago, or from his death. No, what has to die is our old Adamic nature, our own selfishness. When humanity is transformed, then we are safe. Because he died, but what died 2,000 years ago was selfishness. So he saw the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If selfishness doesn't die in you, you are not going to be born from the water and spirit. Because you are going to be full of negative emotions. Those are the dark waters and unclean spirits. We must have one life spirit, not many spirits that want different things. Spirits are the sources of twisted desires, of selfish sexuality, for instance. And this is what brings chaos in the issue of twin souls. Many people usually want to find their other missing half, so to say, but very often with selfish intentions, because they want the other to satisfy their own expectancies, desires, and this has nothing to do with inner growth. So if we are meant to find someone with which we can be in a complementary relationship on different levels, not just on marriage, but also as friends or disciple and master and so on, then we must be attuned within ourselves. We must be expressing the new Adamic nature, the last Adam. Even the apostles, 2,000 years ago, said that he who does not homologate Isho, the Anointed One, the One that has divine light, doesn't come from the Spirit of the True God, but from the Spirit of the Anti-Messiah, the False Messiah. That's a passage we find in 1 John 4. Unfortunately, the Church translated, He who does not confess that Jesus Christ came as the Son of God is not from the true God. So, they are missing what the word homologate means, because in Greek, the word is homologain, which comes from homoios, from the same species, and legain, to say, to act like. Logos is an intelligence that can be manifested through the mind, heart, and body. So if we don't manifest the logos of life, then we cannot be coming from the true spirit of life. It's obvious. So in order to find complementary twin souls with which we can grow, and even a close twin soul with which we are complementary on all levels, we must be attuned within ourselves, and we must homologate, vibrate as the master, in a greater or lesser degree. I'm not saying we have to be exactly like the master, because that's very difficult. He was a man that was born from the water and the spirit on earth, and we are baby souls or child souls and spirit embryos. Maybe we are baby spirits in the process of being born on a spirit realm, but very few people have attained the full spiritual birth. So we are crossing the uterus of this universe. And in that process, 
there are different degrees, different stages of growth. So we need to cleanse the waters, the emotions. And this is actually what connects the divine twins within and outside. In Hebrew wisdom, we are told about sister souls that can only find each other when they receive enough merit when they deserve to be with each other. And this begins with the work on the emotional sephirot, the spheres of the emotions, starting with chesed, mercy. And as you might know, the seven emotional sephirotic spheres are known as chesed, mercy, the force, geburah, beauty, tifereth, victory, netzach, or splendor, yesod, which is the growth of living energy, and finally, Malkut, the kingdom of realization. So in terms of emotions, we can be speaking of true mercy and not self-indulgence, which is the opposite. If we don't have true mercy, then we become self-indulgent in many aspects because we lack restriction, force, will. And this lack of will leads us to get filled with wrath, anger, and many other passions. So there is a lack of proportion, a lack of beauty. The sphere of deferred beauty gets obscured, and we become self-compassionate, full of self-pity, full of self-deprecation. So if we have those emotions, if we don't value ourselves, how can we value others? How can we value the partner, the friend, the teacher? There cannot be twin soulship. And if that triangle of mercy, force, and beauty is not harmonized, then the lower triangle of victory, splendor, and growth is going to be disorganized as well. So instead of victory over the emotions, we might have competitivity over others. Many partners struggle to be better than the other, to be above the other. And they also are full of envy. They want something that the other have. And that envy belongs to the sphere of or, because it's the mind what sees things that one might think one doesn't have, but everything is inside. So if we see something outside, it's because we already have it. So if we find beauty in another person, there is some beauty in ourselves, otherwise we wouldn't see it. If a person is full of honesty, discipline, and we admire that, then it means we share something. We don't have to be like the other person exactly, we just have to be authentic, grow as we are. And as those emotional spheres are not properly harmonized as virtues, then they generate many problems on the vitality sphere, the sphere of growth, which also involves sexual energy, usually misused, squandered, not only in different kinds of relationships, but also in selfish ways to satisfy their own selfish desires. And when this energy is squandered, misused, it generates evil spirits, twisted, selfish spirits, because it's meant to generate the growth of spiritual garments, even though it's also meant for biological reproduction. But realize that reproduction was not the original intention of divine life. Notice that the way sexuality works on earth is not completely natural, because the Holy One did not split beings into man and woman. That was the result of modifications made by the architects, the demiurge, the external god, if you wish. And this is the origin of many of the splits of twin souls that later on 
I will explain. Now, to finish with the seventh emotional sphere, we have to share, to bring something for the world, to set something into motion so that others can have. And is this sharing what also brings us in connection with other twin souls on different levels, as I said. They can be partners, friends, a teacher, or a disciple, or someone that can teach us a lesson. Because, in a sense, anyone can be our master. We can learn from everyone, and we can be disciples of many others. Actually, as we are going to see, many twin souls have different levels of relationship. They can be partners, but also master and disciple, reciprocally. They can be master for each other. So we also have to understand that there are different degrees of affinities that depend on the soul family to which we belong. If we belong to the same soul family, we are going to have many affinities with all the souls that belong to that soul family. So the degree of twin soulship is greater. Take, for instance, a tree, because we can learn from nature. She is the best teacher, even though if in this world she is a little bit twisted. But notice how the tree has a common trunk, and it divides, and from the trunk emerge different branches. So let's think this is the tree of life. There is one big family in which all our members, souls, sisters, souls, and in that sense, they all are twin souls. But obviously, if they belong to the same branch, they have a greater affinity. And notice how in each branch, we also have little branches that emerge from each branch. And in those little branches, we have leaves that very often come in pairs, sometimes at the same level. And this can be a perfect example of how sometimes there can be a high affinity between twin souls. Notice, for instance, how in this little branch we have one, two, three, four leaves that emerge from the same root. The other ones are below. So in a sense, all those would be twin souls. But there are four which emerge from the same root. Even though the most common split are the twos. They come in pairs. If you notice, this one has two on the same level and the other ones are on a lower level. So, this would mean that the greater affinity takes place between the leaves or souls that emerge from one soul root. And in Hebrew wisdom, all the souls that belong to one big soul root, one big branch, could be considered sister souls. And in a general sense, all the leaves or souls that belong to one branch have a greater affinity than the leaves that belong to another completely different branch. But obviously, they can also learn from each other. Now, the great miracle is when two souls that belong to the same split meet. And this is a miracle that depends on how clean we are inside. If we are not mentally attuned, emotionally attuned, spiritually attuned, and physically attuned with our true being, cannot be attuned with the so-called other half, which is not just a half, because we are complete. Many people believe their twin soul has something they don't have, but this is not the case. They are a mirror. So if you are not attuned, your twin is going to mirror back, whether it is something negative or positive. 
even if the negative trait is not developed in the other person, if you are not fully yourself, something is going to be clashing because the vibration is not compatible. This is the reason why when some twin souls meet, they very often get into trouble and they cannot stay together for long. There have been cases, some of them documented and acknowledged by both sides. There are even famous cases. I think the writer Richard Bach wrote a book dedicated to his twin soul. And they are not together, but they admitted they are twin souls. And there are some experiences which I'm going to tell that are test for the truth of all this. Even though sometimes the relation between twin souls is a distance. Maybe they don't meet, but they see each other somehow. They meet in the soul realm and even they see each other in some circumstances. But for some reason they don't get together for a long time. And I can attest for the truth of this because I have been 30 years experiencing a sort of transformation after knowing a soul which is identical to me in many respects. And in a while I will tell you my own experience in this issue. But before going into it, I would like to point an experience told by a woman called Cynthia Bourgeois. And she told it in a book called Love is Stronger Than Death, The Mystic Union of Two Souls. She was a woman involved in different inner activities, a spiritual growth, so to say. She belonged to food way groups and she was also Christian, married with sons. But it came a point in her life in which she felt completely empty. And she went to live with the Trappist monks in Colorado. And there she was assigned tasks with a monk that lived in a cabin in the forest. And she found in him not only a teacher and a true guide, but also her twin soul. And he found in her his twin soul. So they found something divine in each other. They mirrored back each other. They had read almost the same books. They had the same interests, the same aspirations. And he even explained to her why they were experiencing this sort of divine affinity. He said that according to some ancient traditions, it's possible to merge two souls into one. Actually, there are different traditions on how this is possible. And he taught her about them. One of those traditions is the Irish legend about merging two souls, which is described by poet John Donny, and he called that Abler soul. So Cynthia chose that concept, which I don't like, to refer to the union of two souls that experience a sort of divine love, divine union, to serve the world, even if they are not physically together. If one dies, as it came to uh, happen, in this case, they can still work together. So I'm not going to tell what happened. It's a good story. Because this man was older than her. The woman was 40 and he was 70. And not willing to live his life as a monk. And he even tried to establish a distance from her. So she worked on her emotions to let aside the selfishness. And this was very hard for her because she was not ready for what happened. And she eventually had to learn the lesson the hard way. And she wrote a book telling 
her story, her testimony, which is very interesting, very inspiring, because very often twin souls go through this process when they have a very close degree of affinity. Not all souls have that type of twin soul. Some souls split from the same branch, but they are not on the same level. They have different levels of development and they can be complementary, but they not always find themselves because they are not in tune with themselves. Actually, most twin souls end up getting into conflict because of immaturity. There is even a famous novel about that, Wuthering Heights, in which the twin soul, a man and a woman, belong to different social classes. He is a sort of gypsy and she belongs to a sort of nobility. And they fall in love, but they don't get on well very much because they have different thoughts about different things and therefore they don't manage to be in harmony because their emotional world is not in tune. I didn't read the novel but it's very famous. So there is a very famous song by Kate Bush, Wuthering Heights, and the, the main lyrics are on the on the twin soulship. Because the woman, Kathy, says Heathcliff is me. Heathcliff is the man. So she recognizes him as part of his soul. Which is usually what happens when you see your soul mirrored in another. And this is a true phenomenon. It's not a fantasy because I have lived it. And in the beginning I was very skeptic. It took me several decades to realize what was going on because during the first 15 years I just thought I was falling in love with someone that was a little bit older than two decades. So it was hard to experience this because it didn't make any sense as I grew up. And it came a point in which I was so annoyed and so disturbed inside that I tried to push away the feelings. I didn't want to look into myself. I didn't want to mm, experience the sort of mm, pull, magnetic pull that I felt because I even met this soul in the spiritual realm. We merged in the spiritual realm and there was even telepathy, some sort of communication, which I didn't understand. It didn't make any sense to me. Until I turned about 25, I started to realize there was something, because I found out about the polar beings described by Boris Murabiev. And even though he's very intellectual and he stole his teaching from Uspensky and Gurdjieff, in that regard he experienced something real. He came across the notion of polar beings to explain what happens. According to him, polar beings are those spiritual light beings that decide to split into two and come into the earth, living parallel lives in order to spread their mission, so to say. But they are connected. They have the same blueprint. However, they acquire a personality with a karmic baggage that makes their lives more and more different. So very often they can spend life after life without meeting each other. And only when they reach certain development can meet each other and even work together. And he also said that they recognize each other because they have each other's image within. Something that struck me because before meeting this person 
on a physical level I already knew who she was and for me it was very shocking to discover who this person was because there was a very intense affinity I even found myself speaking like that person even though she is a woman but the tone the vibration of the voice is the same I also experience an intense empathy feeling what that soul feels without verbal communication and when I became 28 years old more or less I began to realize there was something possibly true in all this but when I started to receive certain clues I didn't want to accept it because it was too crazy so I asked for proofs and these proofs were given to me on many different levels I had already experienced shared memories and those encounters in the spiritual dimension and when I became a soul therapist for instance I learned how to find the spirit and soul blueprints mirrored on the birth portals the names and shockingly we have the same blueprint in soul and spirit with different names different birth portals different gender so how that is possible I have never found anything like that and I have to say that in spite of not being with that person physically I have learned much I have discovered myself in ways which I wouldn't have dreamed possible and I think there is something deep still to be discovered I don't think we have the full truth about all this and I know I'm not the only one many more people have been going through the same experiences even though they not always find the same interpretation there is even a new religion called the twin flame experience and obviously some of the things they tell match what I'm describing however they are still describing the old paradigm in which the creator God separates souls so that they learn a lesson through many incarnations and they get together at the end when they finish the process but this is not the tree of life experience because the Holy One does not split the souls this was the result of modifications made by architects and it's even described by famous myths like Plato's myth in the dialogue symposium he says that in the beginning human beings were androgynous they had the opposite within they were spiritual beings but Zeus saw they were too powerful and as he didn't want those beings to conquer Olympus they split the map in two man and woman so they are looking for each other ever since as the missing half and this is not something the Holy One did the architects didn't want souls to be fully illuminated at once because they were performing certain modifications on the planets something that they were doing because they were not in the tree of life where no modification takes place life is spontaneous life is run by true love not love with conditions which comes later true love has one condition which is the sacrifice of selfishness but when you split beings for different purposes than life and true sharing then you end up in a world of division which is the world in which we live now this doesn't mean some souls don't come in choose or in more divisions in order to accomplish one mission this is true but there are advanced souls there are very few most of the souls that are split up 
they split up because the energy is too intense and nature, the architects of nature, split those souls and put them into different bodies so that the task of rectification can be accomplished. And this is well known in Hebrew wisdom. The book of Soar says that when a soul comes, there is an angel that splits the soul in two. One goes into the woman and the other into the man. There is a male and female part. And usually the woman is more awakened. So the awakened part very often incarnates for compassion to help the other. But if the man does not deserve to be with the twin soul, the sister soul, as they are called, then they don't meet each other. Sometimes the other part remains in the spiritual world and there is a guidance from within. So, as you can see, there are different relationships, different degrees of twin soul, but meeting those souls depend on inner growth. So we must deserve, we must be in tune with ourselves. Anyway, it's getting a bit dark already. So I'm going to leave the question for the following day. I will continue expanding these keys. We will see how it's necessary to establish a connection with the divine twin within ourselves. Because we must be married with our full spirit of life first in order to experience an harmonious relation with others. Then we can learn more in any relationship. But as I said, this is for the following day. Thank you very much for listening with attention. Give thumbs up if this was inspiring to you. Share the video. Subscribe and click on the bell if you want to receive weekly notifications. I publish in Spanish as well. This is a bilingual channel. And until the next time, let's keep cleaning the mind and the heart so that we can manifest the true primordial love and modified life, integral conscience and deep blissful serenity.